Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank each of you for joining with us for Sunday, Sunday School Bible Study, coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministry. We have a great and wonderful lesson for today, the Day of Atonement, the Day of Atonement. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, we'll be talking about Aaron entering or uh, enters the sanctuary. Amen. And our uh, aim or facts for this lesson is to illustrate the amazing grace, mercy, and forgiveness of the Lord. Amen. To illustrate the amazing grace, the mercy, and forgiveness of the Lord. Amen. And our lesson is coming from Leviticus 16, verses 1 through 16. Amen. And we are taking our lesson from the Union Gospel Press. And our, <clears throat> our first section, verses, uh, chapter 16, verses 1 through 10, is speaking on preparing to offer the sacrifice. Preparing to offer the sacrifice. And our second portion, uh, verses 11 through 16, is speaking on offering the sacrifice. Our related scriptures, Leviticus 23, verses 26 to 32, Numbers 29, verse 7 to 11, Romans 3, verse 21 to 26, Hebrews 10, verse 4 to 22, and Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 10. Uh, the time is between 1445 B.C., and the place is Mount Sinai. Amen. Our golden text for this lesson. Speak unto Aaron, your brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Leviticus 16 and verse 2. Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson. Amen. As I, we was looking at this lesson, we see that it is, uh, um, this lesson has about uh, five of this week's lesson will come from the, uh, uh, let's, the, uh, let me see, that's the, it will come from the related scriptures. We'll be having uh, uh, offerings for atonement from Numbers. Uh, which was is Monday's lesson, a scarred, uh, uh, a scarred assembly in Leviticus 23, 26 to 32. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, we'll have Christ, our atonement, Isaiah 53, 4 to 6. On Thursday, we'll have sacrifice office for all, sacrifice once and for all, Hebrews 10 and 49. Um, and it's only a portion of a, uh, uh, uh what the uh the related scriptures is saying amen uh and hebrews uh 10 verses 11 to 22 so it's a little extended on uh friday's lesson in the holy place and on saturday's lesson righteousness through faith uh romans 3 21 to 26 amen so those are the days uh that we will be uh, bringing in lessons that will be uh going along with the lesson that we have for this week amen all right, we're going to get ready to move forward. Um, first of all, we're going to uh, give our questions for this week. And then we're going to move right on into the lesson. Amen. We're going to get ready to go forward. Number one, what occasion prompted God to give instructions for the Day of Atonement? And if you would uh, look at the bottom of the screen when I put this out, it will have the verses that the... Uh, answer is in or close to. Amen. Verse, uh, question number two, where in the tabernacle did the presence of God reside? Number three, what sacrifices was Aaron to offer to the Lord for himself on the day of atonement? Number four, what garments was Aaron to wear on this day? Number five, what animals were to be presented as a sin offering for the people. Number six, why was a second goat needed? And number seven, why did the tabernacle itself have to be cleansed? Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson we are moving into. Uh, 
but we're going to ask if anything is said touches your heart, soul, or spirit. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you would, subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together as a body of Christ, studying and meditating on the word of the Lord. Amen. This is a powerful and wonderful lesson. Amen. We're going to get ready and move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. Then we're going to move right into the lesson. Amen. The lesson of the Day of Atonement. Amen. Uh, we're going to get ready and go into prayer. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you that you are God Almighty, and beside you there is none other. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, we thank you that you are our all in all. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We thank you for watching over us and strengthening us and building us up where we're weak, Father. We thank you that you are with us as we go out and when we come in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we claim and uh, declare uh, healing, deliverance, protection, and guidance for all of those under the sound of my voice, Lord. As it said in your word, for Father, by your stripes we are healed. It is paid for and completed, and we have to walk in that healing. Father, we thank you for it, and we do walk in that healing. We do claim that healing of our body, minds, and soul, Father. Lord, we thank you that uh, we ask for a direction and guidance under all those that we love, that our children, our grandchildren, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, uh, sisters, and brothers, all our family, Father, we ask for guidance and leading, and for those that has not uh, uh, become your child, that, Father, that someone has, will say something that will prick their heart, that they will become close to you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Father, we ask that as we go into your word, Father, we thank you that you open our eyes that we see our ears that we hear, and you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The day of atonement, where Aaron enters the sanctuary. Amen. And I don't think it's mentioned very frequently where God calls out Aaron as Moses' brother. This is one of the few times that he mentions specifically uh, your brother and say you need to tell your brother this. Amen. Uh, Leviticus 16, verses 1 through 16, the Day of Atonement. Starting out with uh, verses 1 through 3, which says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered profane fire before the Lord and died. We, you know about that lesson we went over last week. Amen. And the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, your brother, not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat, which is on the ark, lest he die. For I will appear on the cloud above the mercy seat. Thus Aaron shall come into the holy place with the blood of a young bull as a sin offering and of a ram as a burnt offering. I mean, now as we look at this lesson, as I was stating, you know, uh, that we went over the, the lesson that we had for last week, which actually is this Sunday's lesson is what you will be going into. So I try to have it ahead that where you have opportunity to, to look over your lesson before you get ready to go to church. Amen. For those that are uh, back in church. Amen. And for the rest of us, we are always a lesson ahead in our Sunday school book, the Union Gospel Press. Amen. And we do use the uh, Bible. It says Bible uh, Expo and Illuminator. The, and this is, of course, the fall quarter, September, October and November. I tell you, this year is, is flying by quite fast. Amen. Amen. We're going to move right along into the lesson. As we see that the blasphemy of the two sons of Aaron, Nadab and Bahu, Abihu, which is in this Sunday's lesson, form, forms the backdrop for these instructions. A fate similar to theirs would befall the high priest if he entered the most holy place on any day other than the Day of Atonement. There was only one day that Aaron was to go in there. And as uh, 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 we know that uh, God told uh, Moses, tell your brother. Now, now we ain't talking about the, the, the priest. We ain't talking about the, the soldier. We talking about tell your brother not to go off in there. 
Amen. It said, and on that day, he must carry the blood of a young bull for a sin offering and of a ram as a burnt offering. There's a specific thing that he had to make sure that he took in there at, at each, at one at this time and one at the next time. He had to make trips backwards and forwards into them. And said, so when Aaron is representing God to the people in the sanctuary, he wears the fancy garment of the high priest. Now, we are talking about what they're going to describe as what Aaron is will have to wear when he go in the Holy of Holies. Amen. You say, you remember that garment was the one with the breastplate, with the 12 stones on it. It also had the the, uh, the 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 ounces of gold on each shoulder with the 12 tribes of Israel engraved on the stones. And the high priest carried the people he represented on his shoulders and on his heart at all times. When the high priest appears in the Holy of Holies before God for his sins and for the sins of the people, he wears a different garment. The garment the high priest wears he, when he presents the people and himself before God is very plain. The linen in the garment and the breeches and in the mitra shows righteousness, plain and, and simple. He didn't, he didn't have all that dangling and all that uh, uh, fancy jewelry on it. It said this washing of his body before he put on the garment symbolizing water baptism. And this is what Aaron will have to go through. And so when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are baptized in the water as an outward sign, and we put on the robe of righteousness as an inward sign, the spiritual, the spirit, as the Holy Spirit comes within, that Jesus provides for us. We read in Revelation that this robe, is so white because it has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. This garment the high priest wears shows that we stand before God with nothing cleansing us but the blood of Jesus. We stand in the robe of all believers that Jesus has provided. No flush must be shown. Flush has been left behind. We are a spirit man. Amen. Verses 4 through 10 says, He shall put on, put the holy linen tunic and the linen trousers on his body. He shall be girded with a linen sash and with the linen turban he shall, he shall be attired. These are the holy garments. Therefore, he shall wash his body in water and put them on. And he shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats as a sin offering and one ram as a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself, and to make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabern at the door of the tabernacle of meeting then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats one lot for the lord and the other lot for the scapegoat and Aaron shall bring the goat on which the lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering so he's going to throw lots and whichever one is said for this is for this goat, well then whichever one is just the scapegoat that he go, goes here, and the and the and the, and the uh, 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 the uh, sin goat is the one that is sacrificed. Amen. It said, but the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. Amen. As we see the Day of Atonement rituals future two goats, a sin offering and a scapegoat. The first was sacrificed to cleanse the holy place from the sins of Israel that had tainted it. Uh, chapter 16, verse 15 and 19. The high priest would take blood from this goat and sprinkle it on the mercy seat. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. 
Then he would place his hands on the, on the second goat, confess Israel's sin, and send it into the wilderness as a sign of the removal of sin. Both animals symbolized Christ. Hebrews 7 and 27 to 28 and uh, Hebrews 9 and 7. Uh, the Hebrew uh, verb kipper to cover refers to the mercy seat, and it is the root of Yom Kippur, uh, chapter 23, verse 26 to 32. Jesus covered, uh, made atonement, and took away the people's sin, our sin. Amen. Verses 11 and 12 says, And Aaron shall bring the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull as the sin offering, which is for himself. Then he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, with his hands full of sweet incense, beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. Amen. As we see the creature itself was being strong for uh, strong for labor and patient in bearing the yoke. Speaking of the bull, Christ had a uh, laborious service to perform the work of man's redemption, and he was strong for it, able to go through it, and did not only readily take upon him the yoke of the law and become obedient to every command of his divine, divine father, but even to death itself. The death of the cross, the kind of sacrifice was a sin, the kind of sacrifice was a sin offering, and such Christ in soul and body was made for his people, was made for us, in order to which, as this sacrifice, he was put to death. The, the priest could not go into Holy of Holies without blood for his sins and the sins of the people. This bullock is killed at the brazen altar. The blood from the animal will be brought into the Holy of Holies. We have mentioned this over and over, but it is very important to remember that the blood of animals can only cover sin. The blood of Jesus Christ does away with sin. The veil that separated all from the holy and holy and consuming presence of God. It was this veil in Herod's temple that was torn open from top to bottom at the death of Christ, signifying access into God's presence through Jesus Christ. Matthew 27 and 51, Mark 15 and 38, and Luke 23 and verse 45. The smoke from the incense burning will separate Aaron from the full view of God. The presence of God in the Holy of Holies, when, the, when he put the sweet incense in the coals, the smoke made a veil where he could not see the face of God. Verses 13 and 14 says, And he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony, lest he die. He cannot see God's face and live. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his fingers on the mercy seat and on the east side and before the mercy seat he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. As we see the testimony included, the tablets of stone upon which were written the Ten Commandments. This is what Moses had, had, had to go back up and re-prepare after he had broke the first set uh, from being upset uh, and, 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 and mad with the Israelites for sinning and, and having a, a, a golden calf made to, sac to sacrifice to. Amen. And so... As he Moses had Aaron and Moses had been together since this began, and the, this is the time that uh, um, Aaron was allowed to get this close to a uh, God because previously only Moses 
was the one that went up and talked to God and 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 and, and uh, dealt with anything with God. But now uh, Aaron is is moving in and and doing uh, some of the work. And say so if he entered in without blood or in any way did not fulfill all the requirements of God, he would die. The mercy seat covered the ark of the covenant, and the spirit of God hovered in the smoke above the mercy seat where Aaron could not see him. It said the Holy of Holies was closed off to everyone except the high priest. And as we know, when uh, Moses uh, requested that uh, God would uh, allow him to see him, he put him in the uh, cleave of a rock and put his hand in front of him as he passed by, and he only could see the back side of him. And then with seeing that, his head turned gray and all that kind of stuff. He, he was shining when he came down and everything. So in just seeing the back side of him made a big uh, a big a difference on Moses. And so Aaron never had that uh, opportunity for all that to occur to him. Amen. And, so, and was even close to him except for one time a year. This was only done once a year that he could go in there where God was. Thank goodness Jesus opened the way into the very presence of God for all believers when he was crucified. As we see in Matthew 27 and 51, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quick, and the rocks rent. This veil had kept all out except the high priest. The veil symbolized the flesh of Jesus, but can go both. We can go boldly now before the Father. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. We go boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot go without the name of Jesus Christ. We still got to, it's still requirements that has to be made. Amen. I said seven times this number symbolic indicated completion or perfection. As we compare it in verse 19. This sprinkling uh, seven times on the mercy seat, talking about sprinkling the blood seven times on the seat, symbolized the complete work of mercy that Jesus gave all who believe. This blood sprinkled, completed the sacrifice for sin for that year for the priests and the congregation. The blood of the perfect lamb, Jesus Christ, completed the sacrifice, sacrifice for all time. For all who believe, all at one time, not to be redid again. Amen. Verses 15 and 16 say, Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people. Bring its blood inside the veil. Do with that do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat. Amen. And says, so uh, he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions for all their sins. And so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting, each which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. Because it was among them and because they were unclean, the tabernacle itself had to be cleansed before, before uh, uh, Aaron could go in and go unto God. Amen. And so the offering of the blood of the bullock in the last lesson was to make him acceptable to God to bring the blood of the sin offering into the holiest place for the congregation. Symbolically, it was as if the sins of the people were under his this blood that he sprinkled. He we have said it before, but it bears repeating. This blood that was sprinkled could not clear the conscience of the person being offered for. It could only cover the sin, not do away with it. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can clear the conscience and do away with the with the with the sin. Amen. The object of this solemn ceremony was to impress in the minds of the Israelites with the conviction that the whole tabernacle was stained by the sins of a guilty people. By those sins they had forfeited the privileges of the presence of God and worship of him. 
so that an atonement had to be made for their sins as the condition of God remaining with them. And we see the e and we see that even the tabernacle must be sanctified, for because the place that it was set up was in the midst of a sinful people. Just as Aaron had a had to uh, sacrifice for himself first and then for the people. God is a holy God and will cannot and will not accept anything that is unholy. Amen. As we look at this lesson, the principle of this lesson, we are to learn and see the crucial aspect of the atonement and forgiveness in order to gain a greater appreciation for God's holiness and mercy. The fact that so much had to go into it for Aaron to just go in and do this uh, for the people and that we are so blessed that Jesus Christ himself did this uh, for us. And, 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 and when he did it uh, and shed his blood, then it did not have to be done again. But when uh, Aaron did it, he had to do it over and over every year as uh, long as he lived until the next uh, priest a priestly person was put in his place. Amen. As we see, the application of this lesson is to properly view God's forgiveness and his holiness in perfect balance, understanding both our responsibilities to God's holy standards and his merciful ways. Know that he is understanding. Know that he's merciful. Know that he uh, allots us grace. Amen. And know that all of this is because Christ has uh, been sacrificed that our sins may be forgiven if we repent and turn. Amen. This is a great and powerful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you.